Good afternoon, I think everybody can hear me. Um, uh, first of all, I have a friend, Tim Henderson, the staff here at the Auburn Avenue Research Library. We truly, truly thank you uh, for spending a, a beautiful Sunday afternoon uh, with us. Uh, we always, always like to start off with that because uh, your time is valuable, and we truly think we have a valuable, valuable program uh, here today, so we appreciate your attendance. There's information, just a quick little housekeeping notes. There's information about upcoming programs for the festival and also for the Auburn Avenue Research Library out in the lobby. If you have any questions about what we do here, we have staff here um, that can definitely uh, tell you more about uh, our facility. But uh, we know why you are here uh, this afternoon, so we don't want to take a lot of time. Um, we don't have a better friend in the festival in uh, putting on events like this. And I don't have a better friend in terms of doing the job that I do than uh, Dr. Cody Hopkins. Um, she truly, truly is an asset to our community, but particularly to um, what we do here and meet our mission uh, at the Auburn Avenue Research Library. So with uh, no further ado, I'd like to turn the microphone over to Dr. Cody Hopkins. Thank you very much, Morris. You notice that we have a policy and a practice of starting on time. That means that people are going to be coming in while you're seated there. So you may want to, if you don't want people crawling all over you, you may want to slide on into the middle a little bit so that the people who are coming a little later can join us. I am Colette Hopkins, and I am Director of Education and Public Programs for NBAF, presenters of the National Black Art Festival. And we say NBAF because that is our brand name throughout the year. And the only time that we are the National Black Arts Festival is for two weeks in July, in the summer. This summer, our festival kicks off on July 6th, and it runs through the 15th with our big part of our festival being at Centennial Park. Most of the events that I do as part of NBAF and the festival are free and open to the public similar to the event today. We try to have them in public venues that are accessible to you and to others in the community. So we look forward to having you join us. You'll notice that the first two rows have reserved for MBAF members only. And what I don't like about that is they're empty. So that means that most of you are not yet. You hear that yet, that's an optimistic person that I am. Oh, look at this. <laughs> and do you know that as a member of the National Black Arts Festival, you receive a free CD today of the performance? Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful. We try to always have premiums here for our members so that they can know how much we appreciate um, and support them. <laughs> so you can join today. Membership is as low as $35, but at the $50 level, those of you who become members at that level get these private emails from me. And I tell you that I'll have reserved seats for you at these kinds of events. I also tell you that I'll have presents and special um, things for you. Last year, one of our special things, we went on a trip and people got the opportunity to meet the artist at his home and to be hosted just because they decided to write a check to benefit NBAF. So that's my commercial for today in terms of talking with you. Outside, like Mara said, are a lot of the events for Auburn Avenue, but a lot of the events for the festival, the National Black Art Festival, and I need to say to you that this <coughs> is our 24th year of being a festival, and that's amazing. And when I say that to you, I also need to say that we are a one-of-a-kind institution. There is no other institution. Even though there are lots of festivals in the Atlanta area, we are a national festival. We are a traveling festival. We go to other communities. Um, this year, we are celebrating, as part of this event, the 50th anniversary of the independence of Jamaica, which is August 6th. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> And guess where I will be on August 6th? Yeah. In 
Jamaica. Yeah. We have a study tour going to Jamaica. Yeah. We'll be in Kingston, and we'll be at the Pegasus. And the Pegasus, not because it's the Pegasus, but because of its location relative to the celebration of the independence. We want to be right there. And we're going to then leave Kingston and go to Montego Bay. We're being hosted by the black mayors. Their mayors came to Atlanta. We hosted them here. And we are going there to be hosted by them. We'll be in Centennial Park with our Children's Education Village. And we'll be celebrating as part of that village the 50th anniversary of Jamaican independence. And we'll be teaching children about Jamaica. Just like today, you're here learning about mental music. Many of you already know it, but some of you don't. And so you'll learn about it as part of this presentation. So I am so appreciative that you decided to spend Sunday afternoon with us here at Auburn Avenue. As Morris also said, we're great partners. We partner all year long. We partner to have authors here. One of our authors as part of our Jamaican experience is Miss Jillian Rouse. Her new book came out on Jamaica, and her second new book is already in press. So featuring Jamaica is, is fiction, but it's historical fiction with information about the founding of Jamaica built into the story. And so it's a lovely piece <coughs> to add to your collection of reading. So my job now is to introduce the band, but they really truly need no introduction. How many of you listened to WRFG yesterday? Oh, I don't see enough hands. On Saturday afternoon, your car radio is supposed to be on to 89.3. Listening to Mr. Paul Abrahams in the, what, what do you call it, Paul? What's the name of the show? Rockers International. Rockers International. And right now, they're doing a fundraising drive to raise money to keep WRFG going and to keep that kind of international music available to us. And they had on the air the Talawa Mento Band. It was amazing. They had the music up, and then they brought the radio music down, and the mental band was on the air singing, and you couldn't tell the transition. The only reason I knew was because I was in the studio with them, and I was like <gasps> amazed. We are very pleased. I want to thank Ms. Sharon Robinson for bringing the band to our attention. She was the person who said, I said, I'm looking for a mental band to celebrate independence. <coughs> I said, I don't want to have a reggae band. I don't want to have, I want to have the original music coming out of Jamaica. And she said, I got one for you. And as a result of Ms. Sharon Robinson calling this band to our attention, I want to present to you now the Talawa Mento Band. <laughs>
This is the Talawa Mento Band, and we are very happy to be here. Thanks to the National Arts <coughs> Festival. I would like to introduce to you the members of the band. Uh, after the introduction, we are going to show you a few little clips. This, part of, this band is dedicated to the um, <coughs> preservation and dissemination of Jamaica's original uh, dance music uh, art form. So we're going to give you some clips of the very early music. And so um, we have Angela, who will demonstrate a few of the dances as we go along. She's our spiritual leader. She's the one that keeps the spirit of the group together. We have, uh, she's a teacher by profession. Uh, we have Errol, who is on the rumba box. He, a very skilled drummer who is an insurance executive. And he's also um, uh, one of our vocalists. So we have Jennifer on the accordion. Jennifer is the director of the Jamaica Folk Review, which is a folk um, music group in South Florida. And she's the director of music at the Sierra Norwood Canberra Baptist Church and also a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> we have um, behind Jennifer, we have Mr. Keith Stoddart. Many people might know him from way back when in Jamaica. A lot of the old original Jamaican recordings, going back to the whale of Simon and Desmond Decker and the cases, early Cox and Studio. This is Mr. Stoddart, a great director. <laughs> guitarist, uh, Overton, who is an electronics engineer, the man we call Spitty the Atom Bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and this young man here, Tariq, who is a graduate student at the Florida Atlantic University, prides himself in being the handsome son of one of a very handsome member of the band. <laughs> I am Colin and I'm the director of the group. Well, that's a young woman. I am so sorry. We saved the best for the last. She is the icing on the cake, right? Treasure, who is a nurse by profession and our flautist, right? And as you can see, she's a little bunch of time. just like to tell you for those of us from Jamaica already know, but for those who may not know, I just want to give you a few facts about mental music. This is the first recognized music and dance form which has its origins in the fusion of African and European music and dance traditions. It was the music that was played in Jamaica in the 19th century. It was the music of the great houses starting out at that point. Um, but it came into its heyday in the 40s and the 50s, when the earliest recordings of the music was made. This early form of music appears to have been influenced by the work songs which were used in the plantation. Okay? The quadrille, which was certainly the early part of the music, um, was the great house dance. And of course, the Jamaicans with their African retention took it and added a little flavor to it. Uh, I'm sorry, we should put the screen up back. We're gonna do a little um, demonstration of the quadrille for you, okay? You will notice in the quadrille how um, that uh, that's European influence in the music, which shows um, things like mazurkas, scotches, and wards and polkas. We, we will not necessarily play all of that, but you can hear the difference in the music. And we want to play this so you can see how the music evolved and eventually to where we are taking it.
But you know, we Jamaicans, we're never satisfied with everything. We try to improve it. So this is what they added to the quadrille. And as the word quad indicates, it's four. So quadrille is really four movements. But Jamaicans added one to it called the fifth figure. And this is what the fifth, fifth figure is all about. <laughs> of the um, of the work songs that was used on the plantation. Um, mental music is really different from any other music. And um, we're going to show a clip by Dr. Ali Bluin, who is certainly the most, I would say, widely researched and read in terms of um, mental music. <clears throat> she will explain to you in the clip that you will see exactly what makes mental so different. <laughs> Harmonica, 
but the banjo and the guitar, which are the harmonic instruments, were also doubled to play. So you have the melodic side, then you have the harmonic. And as I said, banjo and guitar, the rumba box, uh, which came to us through Cuba, which is an African instrument, in the, in the um, Spanish islands, it is known as the Merimba box, but by the time it got to Jamaica, it was the Rumba box. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, because Rumba was played in Cuba, and Merimba was just too long yes. to say. And um, so it, that took the part of the double days. What would happen in the early days that before the Rumba box was there, they would use a broomstick on a wash tub or on top of a soapbox with, with a bit of card to it, and that would become the base. But when we were introduced to the rumba box, we took it and played it as our own, through Jamaican style. <laughs> <laughs> then you have the rhythmic um, side, to, which is the third aspect of mental music, which would comprise of drums, maracas, claves, sticks, but in Jamaica, the wood breaker, okay? Bottles, stones, or anything you could put your hand on, that, that would make music. That is what would comprise the, the rhythmic aspect of, of um, mental. We're going to play a clip of a very early mental recording, which will demonstrate what we have just said. And this is authentic mental music.
music lends itself to a lot of improvisation. And um, we play this clip so you can see exactly where it's coming from. And one of the improv one of the improvisation is the way in which instruments were made, and also in the way they were played. So we have two other short clips. There was a Jamaican by the name of Sugar Belly, who made a saxophone from cardboard, car horn, a fifi. Who knows what a fifi is? <laughs> right. And a piece of PVC pipe. So we're gonna let you see a little clip. This, these are gems in our culture. There's a word called cardboard, a piece of plastic tape. This ingenious instrument was put together by this Jamaican musician from such diverse elements as cardboard, part of a car horn, and a reed mouthpiece. Out of this unlikely combination comes music, delightfully sweet and clear, and entirely his own. So like a fee feel. <laughs> singing about somebody, they never really call the name. But when they sing about Mass John or Miss Matty, you know exactly what they were talking about. Okay? Now, the first song we're going to do is called a weed song. And it's about a lady who would go through the market and calling out the different types of weeds. 
And uh, so, by the way, if when we're playing, if you know these songs, this is a participatory <laughs> program. Don't be afraid to get up and drop food and sing along. <laughs>
those who live in Kingston, I'm from country. <laughs> <laughs> there was a uh, British soldier camp in, in Rima. And as it was this, those days there were no washing machines. So washing was given out, and the ladies would take the soldiers' uniforms and wash them and gave them back. And this poor gentleman, when he heard the song, what happened to him? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
Mr. Brown here? Mr. Brown? Oh, he's not here. Okay. Well, no one can talk about him. <laughs>
yourself. Yeah. You know, so it's, well, we played very happily sometimes, but this was a hard life that our people had, and the music of what helped them to overcome some of them. Man, as every young man. Over time, Metro Bands came out of the village, and as Jamaica sought to improve uh, tourism and the hotel industry, you would find Metro Bands being in the hotels, welcoming visitors. Sometimes you would see them at the airports. And uh, they would play some music. I think some of them know something like this. <laughs>
was always influenced by music from our neighboring islands. Some from Trinidad, some from Cuba, some from Haiti. In fact, there was a time when there was a little confusion between Mento and Calypso. But as we know, with Calypso it is up and down, and with Mento it is. <laughs> which showed how we adapted some of the music from the other islands. <laughs>
tuba. So when the conductor said Bagua, you know you soon reach a destination. So mental band players adopted that as a sign to say, cut the music soon. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna take a short break, five minutes, and we'll be right back. Okay? So here's a time to call the notes. And <laughs>
the Director of Education and Public Programs for NBAF, presenters of the National Black Arts Festival. And this is my partner in crime, <laughs> Mr. Morris Garden of the Auburn Avenue Research Library. And we work very well together, as you can tell, this is a co-presentation between the library and um, the National Black Arts Festival. What I want to do is, now we got it. Now what I want to do is, of course, um, ask you to just give a round of applause for this wonderful entertainment. <laughs> so different, and that's what we want to present to you. Things that you just cannot, well, let me just go down the street and see this. I couldn't imagine, now you understand those of you when I said I was looking for a mental man, and I just kept drilling down, drilling down, drilling down. For the archives here, we do keep our archives of NDA up here. Um, we have the original note that I sent out to the world saying, help me to find a mental man so that we could share this as part of the 50th anniversary of Jamaican independence. I actually serve on the committee, the 50th anniversary committee, and I don't do that alone. I'm with a nice group of people, one of whom is here with me, and I'm going to ask him to come forth and introduce himself, tell you a little bit about the committee, and tell you a little bit about what's going on in Atlanta around the independence celebration. Louis? Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Hopkins. My name is Louis Parkins, and um, uh, okay, so we have already applauded the, um, the, the performers. What I'd like you to do is applaud this collaboration between the NBAF and the Auburn Research Library for bringing such a fantastic program to us here this afternoon, right in the middle of the makers. So us here in Atlanta celebrating Jamaica's 50th year of independence. Um, are there any independence babies in the room? Are there? 62? 62? We got some 62. Congratulations. I actually told that parents went around planning this. <laughs> They wanted to have their babies for 62 because independence was coming and they wanted to have their seat. And you get big, 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 big up and big celebration. <laughs> well done. Well, I, I'm part of a group here in Atlanta known as the Jamaica 50th Atlanta Planning Committee. And um, we have been putting on a few functions thus far uh, in the celebration of this year's uh, anniversary. Uh, we put on, a, we're part of the, um, the, the, uh, the float downtown for the, um, for the carnival a few weeks ago. Um, we put on a couple other things. We had a sports day, but those are things that are gone. We did uh, Thursday before last a fantastic opening at the um, Chastain Park uh, Arts Gallery in collaboration with the NBA for a Jamaican artist known as Ratcliffe Roy. And I would uh, be, <coughs> The uh, presentation continues through, I think, next week, Saturday. There's an exhibition on his work. He's a Jamaican photographer, Old Talk, Brooklyn, New York. Please go up and see the, the, uh, the, the, the exhibition. The opening was last week, Thursday. It was a fantastic evening. Uh, we had a lot of fun. And um, we have a website that actually is www.jamaicajubilee.com. Atlanta.org that you can go out and see some of the photographs from that. But I really implore you to go up and see this 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 exhibition. It's just another of the events that have been put on by ourselves in conjunction with the NBA and also some others that are coming up. As we know that August is that official month when we got our independence in 1962. And we have a few events that are coming up in August. Four in particular that we're either sponsoring or we are um, uh, uh, helping to, to promote. And the first one is on August the 4th, and it is called Jamaica Day. And this is a function that's been put on before, but of course this year is the big 5-0, and we want everybody to turn up and come in and support it. It's, it's a big family fun day that will be held over at uh, Waywalker Park over in uh, Stone Mountain. 
then the following day is August the 5th, and um, we're we'll having a Thanksgiving service at the St. Timothy United Methodist Church at 5365 Memorial Drive in Stone Mountain. Uh, the guest speaker for that function will be um, uh, the Honorable Ronald Twiggs, Minister of Education from Jamaica. So we have a member of the uh, government coming up here that was going to speak you know, regarding things in Jamaica and the 50 years of our history since independence. Then the official day, for those who are not here from Jamaica, is actually August the 6th. That was the big day in 1962. And for that day, there is a, what is known as a flag raising ceremony, where we will be doing a flag raising at City Hall. And this will be in collaboration uh, with Jamaican communities from the East Coast in Canada, uh, doing this event simultaneously at about I think it's 6 o'clock in the evening. So it'll be really good to come down in your colors and, and help to celebrate that. And then there's a big, uh, you know, we got a party. <laughs> and so the big official uh, gown and uh, the Thai party, or uh, what we call the ball, actually, uh, that is actually um, sponsored by the Atlanta Jamaica Association, the AJA, we're just helping to promote it. And that will be held um, on August the 18th, Saturday, August the 18th. The guest speaker will be uh, Jamaica's ambassador to the US, Dr. Stephen Marciani. And that will be held at the uh, uh, Georgia International Convention Center. That's that big convention place just before you get to the airport down on Camp Creek. So those are the things that we're putting on. We've got a few others as well, but for the month of August, these are the things that we're using to help celebrate. And um, Dr. Hopkins, thank you very much for partnering with us. And once again, please, a big applause for all of these things to make a big up.
change in the music again to a thing called Rocksteady. Rocksteady didn't last very long, for whatever reason, I don't know. But it was still a nice music, so we're going to rock you steady. <laughs> Thank you. 
the bands got popular and the mix, as I say, in fact, there was a time when Calypso and Major was almost mixed up. <laughs> and what, one of the things also which was influenced by Trinidad was the names of some of the mental bands. So you found there was a time when most mental bands, the leaders of those bands were either Lord this, Count that, <laughs> Prince this, or so on. And so you had, for example, um, the, the names of Lord Mesa, right? Lord Paul. <laughs> Lord Laro, Lord Flea, Lord Jellico, uh, Count Lasha and the Hilton Ears, Count, how was that it? Count Prince Miller. Okay, so um, you know that was one of the that was one of the things that you know we are always adapting the, into the music. Now. Um, a lot of mental bands still exist today, and there are some that are still well known and very popular through the island. Um, I can think of the Rod Dennis mental band, Blue Glaze mental band, Glyn Zine, and the Blue Light mental band. And of course, you've heard of the Jolly Boys who have been doing very well, particularly in uh, Europe. And of course, not to mention Jolly Boys. Wow. <laughs> um, and so, in the diaspora, we find that we are always requested to play at anniversaries, birthday parties, uh, weddings, <laughs> church functions, and balls. and balls, and so on. So we are going to give you a little bit of some of the music we play at these functions. Uh, firstly, some of the mental music that we play, and then we're going to do two pieces which will reflect the music that we play when we get invited to play um, at weddings. Okay. Um, in recent times, we have been participating in the Fort Lauderdale Jazz Brunch, and there we play a little jazzy version of a couple of our music, and we will also do that as well. So, the first one we're going to remember, we tell you, mental band is a thing that tells your story about what is happening in the village. So, this one we're going to do is called 500 Foot of Wood. <laughs>
channel one to let them see we can see jazz. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 